Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Weather Outlook for the Southern Region, brought to you by Nutrient Act Solutions. We begin by taking a look at our current uh, rivers that are in flood stage. So this is the USGS's River Gauge Network, showing us that we have nearly 600 stations across the country in flood. And what I want to bring to your attention is the incredibly heavy rains we have seen in parts of Illinois and Missouri and parts of Iowa uh, over the last several days here has got some of our rivers uh, surpassing flood stage that was set in 1993. Now, if you're from the Midwest, 19 1993 is an iconic year in terms of our flooding history, and many of us didn't think we'd ever be able to kind of break those records. Well, certainly some places have, and why I'm talking about this for the southern region, this water's got to come somewhere, and it's going to continue to head south. And the problem is, over the coming 10 days, and this is the main uh, topic of this video, this region in through here it's going to get just hammered with more precipitation. We've already got flood watches out and we will just not see these go away uh, on our all hazards weather map over the next several days. It's because we're adding precipitation to a region that just got soaked. Now this is only the last three days worth of total accumulated precipitation. And we can see near some pockets we're picking up between three and six inches of rainfall in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Kansas. It's been exceptionally wet. A ridge has largely kept precipitation out of the southeast, but we did see a tropical system that just came here off the coast uh, and, and moved north. This was just a little tropical disturbance, but widely scattered showers and thunderstorms through parts of Florida. By the way, today this will bring the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms right here along the coast, but we're going to have to watch for the system that's in the middle part of the country to dislodge and move east before we really break down and get a weather pattern out east. So I just want to show you the next 10 days what I'm most concerned about. Now this comes from what's called the National Blended Model. And when you look at this, we're not going to look at this and pinpoint exact amounts. We're looking more importantly at the pattern. And what do we see? We're not seeing anything shut down the flow out of the Gulf of Mexico, plus the broader trough feature that keeps sweeping through the north central plains in these little short waves that keep coming off of the Pacific Ocean, feeding on that moisture, and it just all comes together right here. We're lifting air in that area, and as a result, we may be adding another three to some locations over six inches of rain over the next 10 days. And here's our problem. We are desperately trying to plant corn and soybeans in this area, rice, cotton, peanuts. We're past insurance dates for some of those crops and we're in trouble uh, and so this is going to continue to be an issue and remember all the flood water from here is trying to come down that river which means if you are anywhere in the bottoms uh, near this river uh, all the way down to New Orleans we're in trouble if there's a place that doesn't get the incredible rainfall it's again where that ridge keeps setting up here over the southeast what are we watching in terms of severe weather? Well, in the day on Friday, Texas, you got a pretty complicated picture, and we're not able at this point to really fully nail down what's going on with your severe weather today. So we're going to have to look at that in more detail in a few minutes. By the time we get into Saturday, we're going to see that the shortwave trough moves into Texas, which means it's out ahead of it in this area. We're watching for strong to severe storms. And by the time we get into Sunday, yes, we do bring some strong to severe thunderstorm threat to the southeast, uh, but this is nothing like you've been seeing this year. And what I mean by that is, we'll take a look at the current number of storm reports. While we are right smack dab on average for tornado reports, I want you to know where they've been. It has been the southern region where all these red dots are located that have really taken the brunt of our severe weather season so far. And now that's normal, that's climatology. But this year, your severe wind reports are well above average. Tornado reports are right at average. And if anything's below average, it's hail. But if I said that to some folks that were in parts of Texas and Oklahoma, they'd say, what do you mean? We've been getting hammered. Uh, so this has just been a very active year in terms of severe weather. Let's take a look at temperatures as we get through some of the bigger details here before I dig into some of the, um, the, the, the regional stuff. And what do we see? We see overall that much of the southeast protected under that ridge for the next five days is going to continue to stay warm. Some of the cooler weather we're getting in Texas, this is mostly just due to cloud cover, uh, keeping you a little cooler than average. Days 6 through 10, that's what you've got over here on the right. We continue to see uh, the, the split right in here. That's our active zone zone warm to the south cold to the north it all meets right here and that's where things are going to continue to be wet and that seems to be the pattern we hang on to for quite some time and this is it this is what's going on we are drawing moisture that's going into texas arkansas louisiana oklahoma kansas that's coming right out of the caribbean it's coming through the gulf of mexico and it's just moving around this giant ridge here 
And because the flow keeps doing this, we're just not able to shut this one down and turn off the spigot of moisture here that's coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. So watch what the flow pattern's doing. And I'm going to tell you something. Until we get rid of the ridge up here, in fact, I'm going to leave that circled. Until we get rid of that, we'll continue to see troughs like this one sneaking in. We're going to continue to see troughs like this one coming around and ridging over the southeast. You watch it with me here. I'll get rid of everything except for that drawing in the upper uh, right-hand corner there. So I click play. Look at how things evolve. We see that over the weekend, first trough moves through Texas. That's why our severe weather threat on Saturday moves over toward this area right in through here. Okay, so that slides through. But look out in California. See that trough coming across there? Look what it does. Because the ridge stays in place over Greenland. Notice I didn't change my drawing there over Greenland. And this next trough sweeps through the south. The ridge stays over the southeast. This is the area that's the battleground. And that's where all the moisture comes in. This is a, like I've been saying, a storm chaser's dream, but a farmer's nightmare. That trough that gets developed right in through here is what just creates the perfect situation for bringing a lot of moisture here into this section of the country. Now watch, I'm going to keep playing. Notice inside my circle up there, we still have the ridge. I got you out to the 11th of May, 12th of May, and finally by maybe the 13th. Look at that. Do you see how the, the reds fade away inside my circle? Because of that, this broader trough finally moves through. That changes our pattern temporarily, and you can thank this deeper trough that's sitting here for all of that. But what do I fear? I fear that as we get toward the middle of the month, look, I got you out to May 16th here. Now I'm going to remove those drawings. The jet stream in the Pacific is going to be screaming. And I think we're going to go back into the same setup we saw at the beginning of the month of May, again at the end of the month of May. Here's some of the details on the precipitation. Today in Texas, uh, you're going to see in a few moments, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, you're going to see multiple modes of convection, widely scattered storms here for the parts of the lower Mississippi River Valley. And then you're going to see over here the remnants of this little tropical thing, uh, tropical system, bringing in some scattered showers and storms. So if we play this out at our high resolution NAM model, here's getting you through mid morning through middle afternoon. Like we said, Said. We're watching for scattered storms here, parts of uh, Arkansas and Mississippi. You're going to notice in Texas that the mode of convection, whether it be squall lines or discrete cells, will be entirely dependent on the outflow of old storms. What I'm just telling you is that if you live in the central part of Texas, in eastern Texas, your next 24 hours are very stormy. Okay, You can see the storms moving through there. By the time we get into the overnight hours on, on, on Friday into Saturday morning, we've moved all of this over into parts of the lower Mississippi River Valley. And then we're going to see the moisture really surge up here to parts of Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, and Illinois. And this blob is just going to move over the Ohio River Valley as we progress forward throughout the day on Saturday. So ruining part of the weekend there for those folks. Meanwhile, the storms move throughout Saturday into this quarter. Remember, that's the area we're watching for strong to severe storms on Saturday afternoon and evening. And then as we progress into our day on Sunday, this finally all moves over toward the southeast. But as the whole system lifts north, we kind of lose uh, some of the ingredients we need to make these storms strong to severe. So just watch for widely scattered storms there. What's the European model picking up on? Well, this is what gets us out longer term. So I'm just going to take you right to Sunday since we've analyzed this. So there's our thunderstorms moving over toward the southeast on Sunday. Now, watch this southern region. Clears out. See this? Monday, Tuesday. We could have a couple of days here after the weekend where things are dry across a broad section. But I'm going to get you out here to Tuesday night. There it is. And we start to see the whole flow pattern setting up again. That's just, watch, right in through this area. Ready? Tuesday through Thursday, Friday of next week. We just keep seeing the moisture surge in through that area. And that's what's got me concerned about this major flood threat. So putting it all together, next 10 days, it is this corridor that I am most concerned about for the exceptionally heavy rains. Getting back into parts of western Texas, getting here into the panhandle of Texas where we got all those cotton fields and whatnot, uh, you're po probably going to be pretty far to the, uh, to the uh, west of this. Ridging protecting over the southeast, but it's in between where things are going to be incredibly wet and our flooding problem continues. Will it stop? Let me take you out here to the end of the month of May. While we could see a lull in activity middle, middle of May, by the end of May, the brand new long range European model just came out last night, and this is what it's suggesting. Now, there is a subtle difference. They're trying to put the ridge where I put that H. 
that would help this region be a little drier. Now it's no good for here. This means this section of the country is going to light up with severe weather. But we could, if we do, if we are able to move this ridge just a little bit west, finally bring in a pattern that brings in some drier conditions. Now this is way out in the forecast. I am just looking at one model run here, but it'll be what I'll be analyzing this weekend to bring you a forecast, a long range forecast again next week. Uh, so I'll be keeping a close eye on this to see how things evolve over the coming days. With that, though, I'm going to wrap up this forecast video. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to our next southern region forecast coming out next week. Hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you.